Hey everybody, this is Mark from PCClassesOnline.com. I am so glad that you're with me today because I'm gonna teach you how to make a business card using Canva.com. Now, if you've never used Canva, then I suggest that you push pause on this video and you watch this one instead because this video will teach you the basics of how to get in and out and using the tools that are built into Canva. But if you're kind of familiar with how to use it, then let's jump right in because I'm gonna show you how to design a vertical business card using Canva and we're gonna redesign one that I made in the past for a great client named Andre Ballard. He's a great guy, a lot of fun to work with and these cards came out really nice. Let me show you what the end result's gonna look like. This is what the card looks like. This was actually a card that he would use at book signings because he just finished his first book a few months ago and he needed to have a particular tool to give in, to put into people's hands uh, to remind them who he was and how to get in touch with them and that kind of thing. So on one side it has a picture of his book and on the other side it has a little bit of details about him and some contact information. So that's what we're going to make today. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. The first thing you want to do is you want to log into canva.com. Hopefully you know how to do that by now. And then when it comes up to this page, the page that you always start with, it asks you to create a design or to choose a template that you're going to use for your design. And normally you would click this big plus button right here and it would open up and it's going to show you all the different choices they have built in. And right here is business card. And typically if you're going to do a horizontal business card, this is a perfect place to start. But we're going to do a vertical card instead of horizontal and right now, as far as I know, Canva doesn't have a vertical card template built in. So we're going to have to put in our dimensions uh, manually. And a standard business card size here in the U.S. is three and a half inches by two inches. Now, I don't know the conversion to centimeters or whatever, so someone's going to have to help me with that one. But what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the top and we're going to click Use Custom Dimensions. And we're going to change this from pixels to inches. And then we're going to put in the size that we need. Now, because a business card specifically is going to be printed, a good printer is going to need what's called bleed area or extra area outside the uh, regular size so that they can trim it and have color all the way to the edges. So instead of putting three and a half by two, we're going to actually put a little bit of a different number. And this is a standard number for any good printer. So for the width of this card, we're going to say 2.127. Oh, excuse me. Well, how about 2.127? And then for the height, we're going to say 3.627. So that just gives a little bit of extra room for bleed. Then I'm going to click Design. And when it comes back up, it's going to have our canvas ready for us right here. And we're going to do a two-sided card. So I'm going to go ahead right away and I'm going to click Add a New Page because we're going to have two pages right here, the front and the back. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. In fact, I'll zoom, sorry, a little too far. And then the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to work on the front of the card. Let me just remind you what the front looks like. The front is going to be right here. It's going to have this background with the book sitting on it and then the Barnes & Noble logo and the there's an Amazon.com logo right here. The front's going to actually be really easy to make. The back's going to be a little more complicated, so we'll jump into that pretty quickly. So let's jump back over here. The first thing we need to do is put our background in there. So I'm going to go right up here to Uploads. And I've already got my pieces in here. And here's my background. So I'll click that. It pops right in there. I just need to make it a little bigger to fill the space by grabbing the corners. There we go. We got the background. And then here's the book that we have already cut out as a transparent PNG. So if I click that, there's our book. I'm going to resize it just a little bit. Remember that this card is going to be trimmed at the printer, so you don't want to have things really close to the edge because it'll get trimmed off. So we'll do something like that. I might move it down a little bit. By the way, a little trick is if you're trying to drag it with your mouse, that works too, but it seems to pop to places you don't really want sometimes. So if you just click it once and then use your arrows, arrow keys to move around, it'll give you uh, smaller movements. So that's about right. Then we need to put the Amazon and the Barnes & Noble logos in there. So let's go ahead and click Barnes & Noble. And that's pretty much all we need for the front. 
So that's pretty easy, but let's jump to the back here. Now on the back, again, let's go back and look at what we're trying to make. We're going to have a circle with Andre's picture in it, and you notice it also has a white circle and then a yellow circle there. That's going to be important as we work through. See, it's got a wooden background, which is the same one that's right here, uh, just closer. Then we've got all the details about him and some pictures at the bottom, along with a chalkboard um, background here that's inside a large circle frame that goes all the way out here. And then you notice that it also has a yellow circle behind it. So that's where we're headed. Let's go back over here. And at some points in the video here, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking and speed it up a little bit so that you can keep up. But uh, I'll stop and give you details when they're necessary as we go. So I think the first thing we're going to put in here is the background. So here's my background. I'll make it a little bigger just so it makes sure you cover the background there. Move it up to probably about here, somewhere in here. I'm not going to worry about the fact that it's not uh, covering the whole background because it's going to be covered by that large circle down here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a circle frame and put Andre's face in it there from this picture. So what I need to do for a circle frame is go to layouts, I'm sorry, excuse me, search, and then frames. And then we'll go down and grab a circle frame, which is right here. And we're going to make it a little smaller something probably like that. And you see it automatically pops to the center to make it center, which is great. Then it says drag a photo in here or upload your own. We're gonna drag a photo from my uploads. I'm just gonna drag it over there and when we get to where we hit that circle, it's gonna pop right into the circle. Look at that. We'll let go. And then if we hit crop, we've gotta move him down a little bit. So we're gonna click crop and move down until his face is in there where it should be. And then click the check mark right here. That's pretty good. And now we need to put two other circles under there, a white circle and a kind of a yellow circle. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is put the text in here and then there's four pictures across the bottom. And then the very last piece we're going to do is that large arc that goes through here. And the reason we're doing the arc last is because whenever you use a frame, in this case a circle frame, and you drop something in it, putting things on top of it is impossible because if you, put, if you try to put text or anything on top of the frame, or the circle in this case, uh, whenever you drag something over there, it automatically gets sucked into that circle, or into that frame, and it's very hard to deal with. So we're going to do the frame last and then move it backwards behind everything. So let's do um, our bottom pictures. We'll do that next. And we'll go back up to frames. And we're going to drag out just a standard little uh, rectangle frame here. We're going to make it smaller. I'm just going to kind of eyeball what size it might be. Let's do something like that. And then I'm going to drop it here. I'm going to copy it a couple times. And now all I need to do is drag different pictures into those frames. So let me go back up to my uploads. And I'm just going to start dragging pictures into those frames. And normally I would mess around with... Uh, cropping them and moving them to different sizes, but I'm not going to do it for this illustration just for sake of time. And then we'll do our text.
All right, so now we're going to put in the last thing, and that's that large circle frame with the chalkboard background, and it's all going to look like it's coming together. So what we want to do is we want to go up to search again. We want to go up to frames, and then we're going to go and find a circle frame again, this one right here. I'm going to drag it out, get it quite large, make it a little bigger than that, put it right there. Then we're going to go to our uploads and grab the background and drop it into there. Send it back all the way behind everything. There we go. And then we're almost done. Then all we need is another couple circles back there. And there we are. We've got the front and the back of a great looking business card. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. Now, don't forget to click the thumbs up button down there and leave me a comment if you liked today's class. Also, you should consider subscribing to our channel as well so you can get notified every time we have a new class. Now, if you know someone else who would enjoy this video, make sure you share it with them and tell them about PCClassesOnline.com. Now, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and you honestly realize that you need some new business cards, but you'd rather pay someone else to design them for you, I'd be happy to give you a hand. In addition to working with David at PC Classes Online, I also own a graphics design company called Big Blue Designs, and you're seeing a few of the cards we've designed scrolling by right now. You can contact me through my website at bigbluedesigns.com, and you can see more of our work there as well. Thanks again so much for watching. Class dismissed.